books predate the Roman Empire, Egyptians, Sumerians, and other cultures engraved their writings on stone tablets. Naturally, books were few and were primarily for royalty and the privileged. With the invention of the printing press in 1492 by Gutenberg, books became more prolific in society. Now information could be shared across society through books, newspapers, and magazines. Today, public libraries are a staple of every community, and until a few years ago, children looked forward to their first library card. In 1971, a ripple of a revolution started when Michael S. Hart released the first electronic version of a book. This ebook, as electronic books have come to be called, was a digitization of the Declaration of Independence. Soon afterwards, hundreds of other books began to be digitized into ebooks, and in 1998, the first e readers were invented the Rocket ebook and the Soft book. Both e readers were relatively clunky and very expensive, so they were not very popular. But in 2007, Jeff Bezos, the CEO and founder of Amazon, introduced the Amazon Kindle, an e reader that this time sparked interest and sold out in a matter of minutes. The first Kindle, or Kindle One, was on the market for $399. This was quite a price that people were willing to pay. At the time of its first release, 90,000 books were digitally available for the Kindle from the Amazon store. The ease of purchasing books made the Kindle more successful than previous e-readers. With a few clicks of a button, Kindle users could browse an electronic bookstore from their living room, and with another few clicks, and only a few seconds delay, they could be reading their latest selection. No need to drive to the bookstore or library. Instant gratification had arrived. After the success of the Kindle One, the Kindle Two was introduced in 2009 at a price of $360. With a sleeker body and smaller size, the Kindle Two was even more appealing to consumers. New features included a text-to-speech option and a new keyboard. The Kindle Three, released in 2010, was astoundingly much cheaper at a price of $140. The Kindle Three included Wi-Fi and 3G. These added features excited the population. Not only could the Kindle be used for reading, but users could now check their email and Facebook from just about anywhere. Today, at only $99, consumers can now purchase the Kindle Touch. The keyboard is completely gone in this design, resulting in a slender, tablet-like look. The touchscreen adds to the ease of scrolling and scanning. A non-touchscreen option costs only $79. Another model, the Kindle Fire, is very similar to the Kindle Touch, but offers colored images and text. Looking at the history of this device, it is very apparent that the Kindle technology has improved while the price has gone down. If this trend continues, Kindles will soon be cheap enough so that almost anyone who wants one can own one. The Kindle is basically a small computer. Although different generations of Kindles have upgraded their parts, the major components remain unchanged. Power is provided by a rechargeable lithium battery. A central processor orchestrates all of the Kindle functions and a keyboard allows users to interface with the device. The main storage unit that holds the electronic books is a 2 GB non-volatile random access memory. 32 MB of volatile faster memory are also provided. A display controller chip is responsible for painting updates to the screen. The most novel part of the Kindle was the introduction of the electronic ink panel. E-ink technology provides a very clear black on white display that closely resembles pages of a book. Unlike common liquid crystal or LCD displays, the E-ink display requires less energy and can be read in direct sunlight. The E-ink display and its resemblance to books has helped people to quickly adapt to reading the Kindle. A wireless card provides access to the Amazon store through WhisperNet, Amazon's private 3G network. This is used for purchasing and downloading electronic books and for connecting to the Kindle store. Today, the Amazon Kindle store includes more than 1 million electronic books, as well as newspapers, magazines, and electronic games. Unlike cell phone networks, there are no fees associated with the use of WhisperNet. age are enjoying the Kindle and people are starting to swap their paperbacks for e-readers. What makes the switch so compelling? First of all, the Kindle has tools that make reading simpler. Every Kindle comes with a dictionary. One simply highlights a word 
and the definition appears at the bottom of the screen. Additionally, readers can bookmark a page or highlight quotes or sections to return to later. The Kindle is also small and compact. It is easy to carry and can hold up to thousands of books. This is very easy and efficient for people who wish to carry around lots of material. Many electronic books are free, in particular the classics. Now anyone who can afford a Kindle can have easy, inexpensive access to wonderful literature. The Kindle and other e-readers are green. They save paper. Instead of people buying paperbacks, newspapers, and magazines to enjoy and then discard, they can read them paper-free on their Kindle and then delete them. Finally, the Kindle is easy to use. People who aren't tech savvy can quickly learn how to use these simple features. With the advent of digital books, many individuals have expressed concern over copyright infringement. For instance, when Google proposed the plan to digitize all written works from the past 300 years, Judge Denny Chin said that it would create a de facto monopoly and the right to profit from books without the permission of copyright owners. Many people would love to have access to electronic copies of books, but this would allow Google to profit without compensating the authors, living or dead, who actually created the work. These kind of issues exist because this technology of digital media has never set any legal precedence. It will be very interesting to see how legal issues pertaining to digitizing books play out in the following years. Another issue with legal implications is the ease of piracy or theft of digital media. Multiple books, as many as 2,500, are placed in one file called a torrent. These digital library files occupy approximately 3.4 gigabytes of space. Torrent files are then made available for free download. The monetary loss to each of the 2,500 individual authors of the books is minimal. An author may make as little as 50 cents for each book sold. But if thousands of people are freely downloading the torrent file, the monetary loss to the author begins to add up. Similarly, the publisher is losing money on every single one of the 2,500 books, multiplied by the number of times the torrent file is distributed. These monetary losses add up. It remains to be seen how the book publishing industry will address the pirating of digital media. The future of ebooks looks very promising, however, it also depends on the available material. Scanning technology allows us to digitize any physically written word. We just need to have the technology available to store all this information. According to Mr. Kelly, author of the New York Times article, Scan This Book, all of the available material from Sumerian clay tablets to web pages would consume approximately 50 petabyte hard disks. Currently, the space required to house all of this memory would be the size of the small town library. It is probable that with the progression of technology, all of this data will be available on portable devices. Imagine all of the world's published information available at your fingertips. Down the road, it is very possible to see an extinction of bookstores and libraries. Just as video rental stores such as Blockbuster have been eliminated by technology such as On Demand and Netflix, our society may see a sharp decrease in the use of conventional books. The purpose of e-reader and e-book technology is to make reading more convenient, and so far it is doing just that. Carrying around a small Kindle versus five textbooks is definitely more appealing. We project that in a few years, e-readers will be a necessity in school, the home, and the workplace. Children will most likely look forward to their first Kindle rather than their first library card.